Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Williamson ether synthesis. The Williamson ether synthesis provides a uh, provides a way workaround for the reaction of alcohols with acid to produce ethers, uh, and provides a general approach for the formation of uh, non-symmetric ethers. Uh, in general, the Williamson ether synthesis is is also an SN2 type reaction, but instead of having an alcohol, uh, the Williamson ether synthesis is a, a reaction between an alkoxide anion and an alkyl halide to, to make an ether. So this gives us the ability to synthesize a non-symmetric ether. So let's say we were interested in synthesizing uh, a particular non-symmetric ether. Uh, in the previous video, I, I talked about ethyl propyl ether. If we reacted ethanol and propanol in the presence of acid catalyst, we'd get a mixture of things. But if we can control which piece is the nucleophile and which piece is the electrophile, we can get one specific outcome. And that's what this reaction is all about. We're going to return to this theme in, in, in the discussion of other kinds of reactions. In this particular example, we can have the uh, either part of the molecule come from the alkoxide anion. So we could have the propoxide anion and we can have it react with uh, an ethyl group and a, with an appropriate leaving group. And that would generate ethyl propyl ether. And the mechanism of this reaction is a really, really straightforward, simple SN2 type reaction, uh, like you've seen a number of places. There's also nothing stopping us from using ethanol or, or ethoxide as the nucleophile and uh, have our leaving group attached at the end of a propyl chain. And then likewise, this would be an SN2 reaction and form you know, one ethoxypropane or ethylpropyl ether. With few exceptions, uh, these alkoxide anions are not things that you can buy and store. They need to be made in the uh, in the context of the reaction, or as as using the, the fancy organic chemistry parlance, in situ, in the situation, right there. Um, and there are two ways that this can be done. Um, one of them uses a, a base, uh, alcohols have pKa's in the range of 15 to 18. So there are a lot of things that are basic enough to deprotonate the alcohol and make, uh, make the alkoxide anion. Uh, and one popular base is to use sodium hydride because the uh, other product from the reaction of sodium hydride is hydrogen gas, which is volatile and, and you know, bubbles out of the solution as it's formed. So certainly other bases can and have been used. Here we generate our sodium ethoxide. For simple alcohols that don't have other functional groups on it, uh, there is also a, a redox process that can be done. Uh, the, the sort of net outcome is the same, but instead of using sodium hydride, you use sodium metal. Sodium metal reacts with alcohols like it reacts with water. Again, forming the alkoxide anion. 
and then they're actually forming hydrogen gas, though not through a proton transfer, but through transfer, but through electron transfer, uh, and a uh, you know, and, and an overall redox reaction. Sodium is oxidized, and hydrogen is reduced. The um, this reaction has some limitations. Uh, and the biggest limitation is competition with elimination. So let's say we were interested in synthesizing an ether that looked like uh, this one. Ooh, not indium, oxygen. If we were interested in synthesizing this ether, we could uh, we could imagine two different reaction pathways that would do it. We could start with cyclohexanol, deprotonate it, and then react it with something that has a leaving group on, uh, on propane. Or we could start with propanol deprotonate propanol and instead of having uh, propanol instead of having you know propyl chloride well now wait a minute I want to have both of these on the screen Of having propyl chloride, we can have like cyclohexyl chloride. Of these two approaches, the one on the top is so much better uh, because we have a primary substrate in this reaction. And then a primary substrate, SN2, is going to win over E2. And in the bottom, with a secondary substrate, a secondary alkyl halide. And E2 might win. It might not win, but it might win. And so we'd probably get a lower yield out of this uh, secondary reaction. The other limitation, and we'll talk about that uh, in an upcoming video is that this reaction only works because it's an SN2 reaction only works in things that can undergo SN2 reactions. So there are some types of ethers out there where the oxygen is connected to an SP2 hybridized carbon. Well, that bond can't be made in the Williamson ether synthesis. In the next video, I'm going to discuss alkoxy mercuriation uh, as another way to make ethers. And that's the reaction that's going to solve uh, or, or enable us to make ethers at more substituted carbons. Thank you for watching.